Welcome everybody to the Dan and Dan Show. Dan Squared and NAB 2023 Extravaganza. Now that I got that out of my system, uh, today we're going to be taking a look at Rochester Sports Network um, and how they took their production values to the pro level with our cloud native platform, Chiron Live. We're going to be talking to Dan Higgins about who's going to give us some background on Rochester Sports Network, the productions they've been doing for Rochester University, some of the limitations they were hitting with their previous workflow and how Chiron Live helped them up their game. So before we dive into it, for anyone in the audience who uh, isn't familiar with Chiron Live, I just want to give you a quick walkthrough. So Chiron Live, uh, we launched this at NAB 2022 last year, product of the year winner, no big deal. Um, and it's a all-in-one production system that lives on a cloud-native architecture that makes you know, professional production tools uh, accessible and affordable on demand when you need them entirely from within a web browser. So on the video side, uh, Chiron Live can accept uh, a variety of live sources through you know, the gamut of industry standard streaming protocols. You can switch between those different sources, key in graphics, key in clips, bring in replays on the audio side. We have a built-in audio mixer that allows you to manage all your audio channels as well as a remote commentator interface to bring in remote talent into your show. When we talk about production value in this cloud native all-in-one, a big factor there is uh, two built-in channels of Prime CG. So this is our full function CG functionality with you know, fluid animations, multi-layered scene elements, near unlimited graphics on each channel, tight data integration, and the ability to make templates that are endlessly adaptable through replaceable elements as well. There are two channels of prime clips in there, so you can bring in your videos, ads, and replays on air. Uh, another big one with Chiron Live, big game changer, is the replay and telestration functionality. So Live will make recordings of all your sources in your environment. You can jog through those, clip off a replay, and then take it into a bank where you can start getting really deep with you know cool sports analysis with 3D perspective accurate telestration tools. So all of this comes together for an awesome final production output. They can stream out to a variety of platforms. And again, since this is cloud native, it is available on demand by the production hour. You can access it from anywhere with an internet connection, get the full features in a web browser and remotely collaborate with a full crew of people with an environment that maintains real time state across multiple connected users. So I don't think there's any better way to illustrate it than what Dan Higgins did, did with Rochester Sports Network. So Dan, maybe to start, you could give us a bit of background about how Rochester Sports Network came to be, what you've been doing for Rochester University and you know where it kind of is at today. So I'll hand things over to you. Thank you. For uh, the start of Rochester Sports Network, uh, which is at Rochester University, I started that back in 2018, but the conversations with my athletic director started my freshman year in 2017. I talked back and forth with them on their interest in doing uh, sports broadcasting for our, our teams, because we originally didn't have any coverage, and uh, um, I just had a large interest to get it started. So after a few conversations, they gave me a pretty small budget of uh, $750 and I bought a camera, a laptop, and a tripod, and then I all-in-one uh, production software. Uh, and uh, it took off from there. We gained a pretty quick following. A lot of the students, uh, parents, and uh, other athletic departments in the league appreciated the coverage. And our first year was uh, pretty successful. Um, I had a couple of students that are friends today that um, helped me out as commentators and, uh, per and uh, personnel um, to be like camera ops with me. Um, fast forward to 2019, 2020, uh, COVID hit. And when COVID hit, there, there was a really large demand for uh, uh, sports coverage because athletics was trying to uh, start back up really quickly. Um, unfortunately, we could not have a crowd uh, at the start of it to um, help uh, dim down the spread of the pandemic. Um, with that, uh, there was a large, that, that large demand was uh, well known and um, we uh, started picking our broadcast back up. We, uh, we got a lot of 
uh, praise for it. And uh, eventually we um, kept upping our uh, value. Um, you know, we are, uh, for Rochester Sports Network, we're a home team for Rochester University. We're not like a network. We're not, uh, our league doesn't even have a, uh, um, a weed li uh, league wide uh, broadcast like standard. It's all like us and our, and, uh, our team. So uh, I had to set uh, our own standard for it. And for the most part, we kept it mostly neutral with some home team uh, uh, parts in it as well because uh, uh, we're covering our own sports. Uh, as we kept moving on, you know, uh, audiences came back, uh, but the demand was still there as the, uh, you know, it became an expectation in the league to cover uh, broadcasts. It's still not as, it's still not required, but it eventually may change if uh, the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference wants to make that change and, you know, Rochester is going to be ready for it. My time at Rochester has uh, dimmed down a ton. I'm no longer a full-time student, but uh, the... RSN has lived on through the athletic department. Um, they've picked up my work. Uh, I will say not quite at the standard that I put it at because I put a lot of love and care into it, but I, um, I'm constantly in contact with them when they need help. And it's, uh, it, was a, it was a great time. It still lives on, which is awesome because uh, uh, I wanted to live a long time. Yeah. So what started kind of as a passion project becomes an expectation that needs to be delivered, you want to up the game. Tell me a bit about what uh, limitations or barriers you were kind of starting to encounter your existing production setup as you kind of looked to up the game of what you guys were doing. The biggest thing was uh, keeping people involved uh, and having uh, more than just me do it. I'm one person and having a team or like having support is pretty important to the production. Uh, when. We were uh, starting off using our, uh, I'm going to call it the all-in-one compared to Chiron Live because they're both all-in-one productions, but the one I was using was one seat. Uh, only one, one person could sit at the laptop, but that person's doing camera cutting. Uh, there was a replay option, graphics, and that's a lot, of man a lot to manage for one person. And on top of that, myself, is uh, the logistics of putting on a live stream. So setting up uh, you know, your camera and tripod, making sure everything works together and having and managing a connection. That's a lot to take on for another person If I, uh, as I exited. so Being a one-day yeah. band isn't easy. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's very hard, and uh, it's very hard to teach someone new all that information in a quick amount of time. And that, that was, like, one of our biggest things, because if I were to, like, be sick or if I had something else going on that was school-related, um, I would need someone to step in, and unfortunately, I had to have my phone like right next to me in case something were to happen. And so, teaching like my athletic department to pick it up was better because it was over a length of time. But teaching another student who may not have the same experience that I had, because uh, and some people are just interested in sports broadcasting, but they have not had like proper experience or like practices to do it. So, um, it, it, having more than one seat is. A big thing. Yeah, a big one, especially when working with student volunteers. And I know the other one, you know, I know you've done a, been part of a lot of very cool productions uh, outside of Rochester with the Detroit Pistons, Detroit Red Wings. You have an eye for what you like to see in a production. And I know one thing that kind of was sticking with you was uh, your ability to create, you know, kind of pro-level graphics. To, you know, tell us a little bit about that. For sure. I, um, I uh, was a freelance graphic designer for about five years and so I have a, a keen eye of what I want to see and I had a strong interest in sports broadcast graphics that's why it's kind of how it's led to Chiron because of their their work and uh, the all-in-one production we used was like a templated version uh, where you would have to work with their company to make it happen you can um, compare to uh, Chiron Live, where you can learn it and then do, and then uh, go on and do it without the help of much else. Um, that was a big uh, comparison to having Chiron Live for the production. Yeah. Yeah. And so, what were some of the big uh, kind of draws to Chiron Live in trying to solve some of these problems? How do you think? You know, how did you sort of see that it was going to help you improve productions based on those problems you were having? The big one is multiple seats. 
uh, since Chiron Live allows someone to operate like one part of it, um, whether that be someone doing replay, someone camera cutting, someone doing graphics, that's three people that eases the workload off of the all-in-one director that can do everything. Uh, it was one of the big factors of using Chiron Live. And another one being, since uh, we are not limited, or RSN's not limited to uh, you know, uh, a contract or league standards of uh, branding. I wanted to be able to, you know, showcase our school through um, through our graphics and be at a and then have it at a network level of style. So, uh, ha uh, Chiron Live has Prime CG inside of it, and you can utilize that to its full potential, which allowed uh, myself to design. Rochester Sports Network, branded graphics all the way through. I didn't have to use templates. I was able to take my full creative ability to design it. Awesome, awesome. And uh, I think what I'd like to move into next was your first game day production with Chiron Live, which was uh, uh, the Rochester Warriors basketball game, kind of a doubleheader men's and women's basketball game that night. Uh, tell me a bit about what you went through to set up your production, what your workflow was on game day with Chiron Live. We definitely stepped up our production value. We went out and rented uh, equipment. We had two Panasonic cameras, tripods, uh, Matrox encoder, uh, and Chiron Live. And I brought my and I brought my PC from home to Rochester University uh, just to make sure everything works properly. And it worked out really well. Uh, I had to. I worked with the uh, sports information director at my school to organize some student volunteers to be able to have camera operators and replay. Um, I uh, that and that was their responsibility to find them uh, a after we agreed that we were going to do this. And for myself, my job was to design the graphics, uh, organize all the equipment. Uh, we don't run like a normal show. It's straight basketball. We aren't. We don't have TV, TV timeouts. We don't have storylines to really follow. And it's a quick-paced action, or it's quick-paced game. So, uh, with like this score bug, for example, showing stats on this alone with like no commentator already steps it up higher than anyone in the league. And it was a big impact because you, people can follow along with uh, follow along with the game with this kind of information alone. And having a commentator is uh, extra. And uh, I mean, the one thing I want to call out there in your setup, just because. This is a question that whenever, you know, comes up very frequently when people consider bringing a production to the cloud, one of the first things they always kind of ask is, well, I've got a bunch of, you know, cameras we've had for a decade, you know, hardwire SDI cameras, how am I going to get these into the cloud properly, properly show a sports game with everything in sync and in time? So in your case, what you used was a Matrox Monarch Edge Converter. You fed those cameras into there, and the box itself was syncing and timing the cameras before streaming it out into the cloud. Obviously, you know, depending on, you know, if you're, you get less than a whopping seed budget of 750 like Dan did, you might not, you, you might not want to buy a more expensive encoder. So in which case, the best advice is kind of same device, same network, same pipe. You know, try to keep things as consistent as you can connect those capture devices to the network through the same method, whether it's hardwire, mobile hotspot, or Wi-Fi, and just make sure everything's as consistent as possible to even up that timing. But again, we really encourage, particularly when you're in sports, I think you had the saying, you don't want to see the layup twice when you're, when you're switching between cameras, oh. um, is to use you know, a, a, a strong encoder to, to uh, sync everything upstream. So I think thing I want to talk about because it's, it's another interesting part of your history is you know tell us a bit about how you came to be such a you know skilled prime CG designer and uh, walk us through a bit of you know what you what you did with these packages that you played throughout the game yeah uh, my history with uh, Chiron Prime is uh, over the pandemic Chiron started their Academy and I wasn't doing much uh, because school was out, everyone was at home, and I just, and I had my strong interest in broadcast graphics. Uh, I was like, All right, I should do this. This seems really valuable. I knew the Detroit Red Wings use Chiron in their control, in house control room, so I want to be able to, uh, you know, eventually step into that role if that opportunity ever comes. And learning it 
took a couple uh, took a couple weeks of on and off time learning Prime, and uh, and th then being able to kind of see the process all the way through from designing it to integrating it into Prime, um, was a big benefit to you know learning it and also just being a graphic designer for it. For the graphics for Rochester Sports Network for Chiron Live, um, one of the big factors is uh, being hands off as possible, uh, leaving this uh, all this information try to be. Uh, completely automated, minus the fact that this stuff is typed out as a normal graphic operator would do. But um, as for this stuff here, the name, the logo, scores, quarters, time, all that stuff, I don't want someone to operate because I don't want to operate it. It's a lot. Of, it's very taxing. So uh, being able to use like data objects, um, I also for the clock we had a camera pointed up at the clock using an OCR program, and then we used a web socket to talk to. Uh, Chiron Live and the scene so that all this was in real time and I didn't have to worry about it because all of it was accurate. All, everyone can follow along and I can focus on stuff like this, like uh, like bench points on our stat sheet. Oh, awesome, Dan. Awesome. And uh, while the game was going on, you know, over the course of the game, what did you feel were kind of the highlight improvements in, in using live during your show? I know a big one was just kind of the... A big one for you is the experience of your student volunteers during a show. Kind of, did you have fun after, and did everything go okay? You know, tell us a bit how your student crew fared with Chiron Live. Yeah, um, since using student volunteers, uh, sometimes sports broadcasting is a little um, far of a jump for people. They watch it all on TV. You know, with the NBA. Um, the MLS or NFL, they see it, but the work behind it's a ton. And I never want someone to be scared over the work. So I always make sure, um, you know, when someone comes uh, with interest but no experience, um, I want to make sure they have, like, a good time and uh, know what they're doing and then reinforce that as the show goes on. Um, with uh, I had three student volunteers, uh, uh, two camera operators and a replay operator. Um, the cool thing with Chiron Live was that I crash course our replay operator. No experience at all, only interest in sports. Like he, he, um, he, has, uh, he was on one of the uh, sports teams at Rochester. So being able to teach him, and then during the game, I just checked in with him. You're doing all right, and, like, and also like, just give him suggestions over like, what they can do. But I don't want to be overbearing and like, on top of them about what they, um, how they operate. The camera operators as well, I, I, um, for basketball, Anyone who comes up that's new to camera operating basketball, I said, do you watch the NBA? It's exactly that. I want, I want that exact look. And uh, they did a great job. Uh, I had a game shot, um, which is just the wide one, and then the tight shot to follow players in the ball for any highlights and any replays. And they did an amazing job. And at the end of the broadcast, I always ask, did you have fun? And then when they say yes, it's a really good feeling. Nice, nice. So, yeah, I think what Dan did at Rochester U is an amazing example of what you can do with something like Chiron Live in terms of lowering the barrier to entry for these tools. You do not need to buy, you know, tons of bespoke hardware at a massive upfront cost. You're able to collaborate with a remote crew. In your case, it was an on-site production, but even then it was ultra lightweight with your replay operator hopping on on his laptop and just, you know, bringing that passion in into a sports production so obviously you heard earlier that uh you know daniel higgins he finished up at rochester u he kind of stepped back from his full-time position and us at chiron saw a guy that was our first prime cg black belt put together a awesome production a uh, total mastermind of the show and we said man we got to have this guy. So we're very excited to announce here at NAB 2023 that we have brought Daniel Higgins on as our live operations specialist. Big hand for Dan. Thank you. And, uh, you know, with that, I'd, uh, I'll let you close this out, Dan. Any final words for us? I really do appreciate Chiron for bringing me on to the team. This is a very exciting uh, product, and especially, like, coming from the groundwork. Um, my school is a NAI Div 2 school. Um, so there's a real big difference from, you know, uh, you know, watching the NCAA March Madness and all their productions or even just uh, regular season. We're not that level and we're not that big of a school. So having the experience of uh, doing the groundwork and kind of like the, 
I almost want to say the bare minimum for live streaming and how it sh I feel should be for any school because every student wants to be in that spotlight and to be able to uh, offer that is um, amazing and especially this uh, Chi especially Chiron Live with what it offers it is awesome. I'm glad to be a part of it to help develop it and then help uh, others um, put on a really successful production at any level. Awesome. Well, thank you, Dan. Uh, thank you for having us today, folks. If you have any questions about Chiron Live, find yourself at Dan, and we'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you so much.